Any of you could drop dead of a heart attack in the next five minutes. So why aren't you terrified out of your skulls because of that? And the answer to that is, you don't know. That's the answer. Because as far as I've been able to tell, most of the things agoraphobics are afraid of, like that they might die at any moment, actually happens to be true. And so the fact that they're afraid of that, it's like, yeah? No kidding, you're afraid of that. How are other people not afraid of it? Well, that, that's a good question. So, that's nature. That's nature. I can tell you another reason, I think, why the feminine is nature. I was pretty happy when I thought this up, and it took me a long time. If you think about the world in Darwinian terms, right, it's a struggle for survival and reproduction, which are basically the same thing. Survival is you, but reproduction is the survival of your gene. It's a survival issue over very long spans of time. Okay, what do we call the selection mechanism? Or who does the selection? Okay, so let me tell you something that makes female humans different than female chimps. If you look at which male in a, female, in a chimp troop fathers most of the offspring, it's the dominant male. But the reason for that isn't because the female chimps sort of flock around the dominant male. Now that happens in other species, but it doesn't happen with chimps. What happens is the dominant male chases all the subordinate males away and will interfere with any sexual behavior they manifest, it'll chase them away. The females, though, are perfectly happy to mate with a subordinate male if they're in heat and they get the opportunity. So they go into heat, which is something that doesn't happen with female humans, and they really don't care who they mate with. Female humans are much different than that, they're picky. So they're, they're are, really, they're choosy. It's a big deal, it's a big deal that they're choosy. So there's famous psychology experiments, you've probably heard about these, where undergraduate male goes out and, you know, asks random women if they'll go home and sleep with him, have sex with him, and, you know, what are they, what happens? I mean, generally they say, get away from me, creep, or something like that, right? Or they certainly indicate no. But then they do the reverse experiment, where they have a female undergraduate go, you know, proposition, essentially males, and, well, what happens then? Well, the males say yes, much more often than the females do. Part of the reason is that sex is much more dangerous proposition for women than it is for men. Because they have to bear the consequences, literally, if something, if the logically appropriate thing happens, which is they get pregnant. So, at least in principle, women recognize that and, you know, they're a bit more cautious. Although there's more to it too, because women also seem to evaluate men for their fitness. Now, so, lots of men have no sexual partners and they have no children. That's not the case with women. Almost all women have one child or more. And it's a rare woman indeed who cannot find a sexual partner. You have twice as many female ancestors as male ancestors. So what that essentially means is that the success rate, the average success rate for propagation for the typical woman is very high. And the average success rate for the typical man is very low. But some men are hyper-procreated. Okay, so, men are subject to selection pressure and many of them fail. Here's an interesting statistic. I think this came from Dataclism, which is a book that was recently written about one of those online dating sites. The big one. Can't remember its name. But he was looking at things like how the typical woman on the dating site rates the typical man. It's pretty funny, eh? Women, or men actually rate women on a normal distribution. So the typical woman scores at the 50th percentile, and half of them are above average, and half of them are below. So why am I telling you all this? Women select men. That makes them nature. Because nature is what selects. And so, you know, you can think, well, it's only symbolic that women are nature. It's like, no, it's not just symbolic. It's not just symbolic. You know, and the woman, in some sense, is the gatekeeper to rep is, not in some sense, is the gatekeeper to reproductive success. And you can't get more like nature than that. In fact, it's the very definition of nature. So, as I said, there are lots of reasons why these symbolic representations are set up the way they are.